What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Living in Bremerton podcast. I'm your host, Cassandra Lopez. If you found this video on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe over there. Tap that little bell so you're notified every time I drop a new video. Today's podcast is all about what's going on in Bremerton, what to do, things to do, activities, rainy day activities, all that kind of stuff. So if you're new to the area or maybe you're just learning more about Bremerton from afar, uh, from across the country or across the world and you kind of want to know what's going on here, well, then listen on because we're going to talk about all the fun things. So if you are familiar with Washington's reputation at all, then you will know that we are known for um, a fair amount of rain. I've talked in other podcasts or other YouTube videos before that we actually volume wise don't get as much rain as you would think we do. Seattle, which is 12 miles east of here, um, doesn't even rank in the top 10 cities in the country for rainfall. So it's not as much as you would think, but it's more frequently and like drizzly kind of like that's how it is. So if it's like like cloudy and like drizzly that counts as a rainy day even though it's not like a torrential downpour right so anyway we have our fair share of indoor activities we also have a good amount of outdoor activities because in the summer and early fall summers here are phenomenal we take full advantage of all there is to do outdoors because we know from like november to march we're going to be inside so while we're on topic let's discuss what's going on indoors because a lot of times even if it's gorgeous weather outside sometimes you just want to stay inside you're not an you're not a people person you're done peopling for the day you just want to go inside right so there's some cool indoor things to do there's actually actually quite a bit of theaters here and I don't just mean like movie theaters like live action theaters and, and all kinds of stuff so depending on what kind of show you're in the mood for so if you want just like a regular movie theater the one that I like to go to with my kids is the Tracy 10 movie house and it's right on the corner of Rydell and 303 also called Wheaton Way, Warren Avenue, depending on where you are um, on that strip. Um, it's in like a, it's tucked in like a little shopping center and it's a local place. It's fairly inexpensive. They actually have, you know, good, decent movies there and stuff. So, and it's also really close to my house. <laughs> so that's a good option. Um, there is Sea Film down in downtown Bremerton on the corner of 4th and Park. Um, that's a good one. That one has like a 21 and over theater as well. So like inside the theater itself, there's like a little bar counter so you can get beverages and stuff while you're in there. There's of course the AMC, which is, you know, a national whatever that's in Silverdale. So they have, they actually just redid the AMC not too long ago and they did, they redid all the seats. They took out like half the seats and put in those big, cushy like reclining seats and so it's super comfortable and really expensive. <laughs> if you're in the mood for a regular theater, there are options. Um, of course, if you want to get out of Bremerton, Polsbo, Port Orchard, Silverdale, if you want to go over to Seattle, of course, has a million options. If you are looking for like a live action, like a play type theater, there's Bremerton Community Theater, which is really cool. They have productions going on all the time. I have a dear friend who used to star in shows. Um, she actually starred in Navita a few years ago. She lives overseas now, but so, Lots of shows going on there. There's also the Admiral and the Roxy, which are probably the two most iconic theaters in Bremerton. They're both in downtown. They're about a block and a half away from each other. They were built at the same time. The Admiral shows more live action stuff. So you'll have acts that come in from around the country. They'll be like jazz groups or musicians, like cover bands. Um, there's actually a show coming up like Eagles, cover band that they do nothing but eagle songs so that's kind of cool they have rock orchestras that come through they have stand-up comedy um all that stuff they also provide a venue for local schools so like if you're kid has a your kid's class has a play or a dance or something like that that's a cool venue to host where the parents can come and the family can come and members of the community can come and see these kiddos play so that's kind of a cool thing the roxy alternatively is only like a motion picture venue but they show they have like themes like right now they're running like an 80s theme so they have all these 80s movies like in fact this morning i just bought tickets for my sister and me to go see the princess bride like in a couple of weeks but they'll only show like one showing one day so the only showing of this one film is in two weeks at 6 p.m. That's it. If you miss it, you miss it. They're not replaying it, right? So so it's kind of fun. Um, they have that stuff going on. So if you wanted to take advantage of that, seasonal theaters, there's this one called the Kids Up 
Forest Theater, which is out in Seabeck. Um, that's pretty cool. That's more um, geared towards like kiddos and, and smaller kids. Um, they do stuff like Seussical the Musical, which is like a Dr. Seuss musical and stuff like that. So it's a lot of fun. It's outdoors in the forest. Um, there's this cute little seating area and everything. And um, so if you're looking for something to do in the summertime when it is wonderful weather, that's an amazing option as well. Some more indoorsy stuff um, that you can do that kind of ties in with our local history and heritage would be like some of the museums that we have going on. We have the Puget Sound Navy Museum, which is like surface ship living, um, the history of our surface lake. There is the um, Undersea Museum, which is actually up in Keyport. That's at our Keyport base, which is directly across from Bangor. So the, the highway that connects Bangor and Keyport is the 308. So we call it 308 Gate to Gate because we love our little rhymes. Anyway, so that's up at Keyport. So that's all about submarines and undersea warfare and living and the history of all of that. So that's really cool. There is the USS Turner Joy, which is a, a battleship turned museum. So it's an actual ship that was in actual service during the Vietnam era. And they've preserved it pretty much how it was, how it was decommissioned. And so they just turned it into a museum ship so you can go tour it and all that stuff. So if you're in downtown Bremerton and you're on Washington Avenue and there's this row of condos there, there's the 400, the 360, the 320, and they just built a brand new rise of apartments. So they're not, I thought they were gonna be condos, but they're actually apartments with storefronts on the street level. So right down the hill from that, cause those are all right on the water on Sinclair Inlet. And there's the Bremerton boardwalk down there and the marina. So the USS Turner George is right down there. So most of those condo units will have some sort of view of either the marina or the Turner Joy or both, unless you're facing north, then you'll see like the Manette Bridge and Manette and stuff, but you won't have a, a shot of the ship. But those are some really cool things to do. Like if you're not in the area and you like want to learn more about the Navy history here and the shipyard history here and the role that Bremerton and the shipyard played in, you know, the formation of this area. Um, those are really, really cool things to do if you have an afternoon off and you want to go check that stuff out. So kiddos, if you have kiddos, or maybe you're a teacher and you just want to learn like, okay, I'm planning a field trip, like what are we doing, right? So lots of stuff for kids to do around here. Um, there's there's a trampoline park in Silverdale um, that's not unique to our area, but we just happen to have one. It's called Defy. I think they're all over the country. So it's an indoor trampoline park. It's pretty cool. A lot of fun stuff going on there. Um, they host birthday parties and events and that sort of thing. And you go in and you, I think the birthday parties, your tickets are good for two hours, but if you just go buy a regular ticket, it's good for one hour. Um, you can buy on extra time, of course, but standard is an hour. They got all kinds of cool stuff. They got like the foam pits and they got all kinds of whatever so that kiddos love. You'll see some older kids, like, you know, teenagers and stuff in there just hanging out too because it's it's a lot of fun be careful as always indoor trampoline parks can be hazardous to your health they make you sign a waiver that should kind of tell you one thing my son actually last year he was eight years old he broke his femur clean in half at defy he wasn't even on a trampoline it wasn't even a cool story but um he had to have surgery and the whole thing and um, had a plate put in and he just had that removed a couple of months ago, but um, he's good as new, you know, um, certified pre-owned. He survived, but you know, it was quite the ordeal. So luckily it happened when he uh, is little and you know, can heal through it and grow out of it kind of thing. Whereas if you're an adult, it may cause a lot uh, bigger problems. Um, there's another indoor park um, called Ahoy Kitsap, and that, that one's geared towards like smaller kids, so I would say like 10 or younger. They have a lot more of the littler kids play type size stuff, like for the littler kids. So I would, if you have little kids, it's super fun. They also do birthday parties. They they host it from like full service, like provide the cake and everything. Obviously that's like the big grandiose package. And then there's like the, the one where you bring all the stuff. I think if I recall correctly. So, but they have, you know, a couple of tiers there for, for you to choose from, but that's a cool, cool indoor um, thing for smaller kids. So this is a cool one that my older kids uh, still really like to go to. And this is the Bug and Reptile Museum. This one's on uh, Charleston Beach Road, Charleston Boulevard. Um, so if you're heading south from Bremerton and like the shipyards on your left hand side, it's literally right there on your right hand side, right across from Pass and ID. You can't miss it, but they have 
Last time I was there, they had a tortoise that was like 120 years old and they have ant farms and they have, I mean, just bugs, you guys. Like, I'm not a huge bug fan to each their own. <laughs> I think all the creatures should be able to live and do their thing, right? But don't be in my house, please. Um, so, but it's really cool. I mean, they have a lot of info, if you will. They have like trivia stuff and they have factoid stuff. So that's all cool. My kids really like it and they like to hold things and just do your thing, hold things. Um, another fun kid activity, indoor activity is the tag zone. It's like a laser tag place. So that's really cool. Obviously, as you can imagine, lots of age groups would have a lot of fun there. I want to say, now I gotta look it up. I want to say that last time I was on their website, I read that you can reserve it for 21 and over party, like for adults. So yeah, check that out. I'm not I'm not saying that's the case. I'd have to go look it up. So, but if you're looking for something to do for any age group of kiddo or adult, the tag zone would be a fun, a fun place to get all the energy out. So if you are a sports fan, the cool thing about Kitsap County and Bremerton is that we're on the Kitsap Peninsula, right? And so we're kind of removed from all of those major sports, the venues anyway. Uh, so we are very close. Though. So like, you know, like I mentioned earlier, 12 miles due west. So you take the ferry over and the sporting venues for soccer, baseball, football are a 10 minute walk. And between the ferry and the, the stadiums where you go watch the games, uh, there's a bunch of bars that are also showing the games. So you can stop into one of those and and, ha and watch it from there as well. Um, Climate Pledge Arena, which is where the hockey team plays, that is about maybe a 15 minute drive-ish from the ferry. So um, that one's definitely not walking distance unless you wanted to walk for a bunch of hours. You could catch an Uber and, and cruise over there. So the cool thing is, is that if you wanted to catch a major sporting event, you're not far. You just take the afternoon or evening and make a day of it. Locally, we have like golf and bowling and ice skating. We have an ice skating rink in Bremerton, you guys. It's right next door to the Bremerton YMCA, which is in Minette. We have a ton of disc golf course. So if you're into disc golfing, we have a ton of that. I mean, obviously we have trees everywhere. So it makes perfect disc golf course. I mentioned the YMCA. There's a Bremerton campus and there's also the uh, Silverdale one. The Silverdale one's newer. They both have pools. They both have all of the equipment. Um, just, you know, depends on your location, which one you favor, um, but they're both available. And a lot of the high school sports, you can, the general public can just buy tickets to go watch a high school game. I live within walking distance of Olympic High School. And so uh, every now and then we'll just walk over and catch a football game because it's fun, fun to cheer the kiddos on. We also have an adult indoor soccer league uh, for men and for women. So that's kind of fun. So um, if you wanted to do that travel and not have to play soccer outside. It is kind. Of, it is a year-round one. So I have clients and friends who've played in this league, and they really, really enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. So outdoor stuff. So let's talk about the outdoors. This is my favorite stuff. So like I can't even begin to explain to you <laughs> the the outdoor mecca that this place is. Um, literally anything that you would want to do outdoors. So like hiking, biking, camping, fishing, boating skiing, water or snow, um, horseback riding, all the things, like all the things you guys. Um, the only thing we don't have is a river runs through it, so you can't go inner tubing down the river, but we do have plenty of inlets and plenty of waterways, so you could go inner tubing behind a boat or something like that, which is a lot of fun. Some of my favorite places to go hiking are uh, Yulin Tree Farm. Yulin Tree Farm is actually private property. It's a privately owned, so I usually take my dogs. There's a waterfall, it's a Dickerson, and uh, my dogs really enjoy it. I take them down and they, you know, cause it's hot out and you know, dogs. And so they like to play in the water and get all wet. And then I have to tell them off when I get back in the car or whatever, but um, they really enjoy it. It's, there's the, the logging trails. If you were just to walk the loop of the logging roads, it's about a six mile loop. So it's pretty accessible, um, not too granular, if you will. There are kind of some steep hills, but hey, it's hiking, right? Um, some of the lookouts are amazing. You get to the top and you can see Seattle like all the way from West Bremerton. So it's pretty cool. It's over by Kitsap Lake. So I like to do that one. Another one of my favorite loops is Clear Creek Trail. Clear Creek is actually in Silverdale. So it starts in Old Town down at the Old Town 
uh, waterfront park and it kind of meanders through town it's like an urban trail so it goes through town it kind of branches off there's a couple of different branches that meet up again so you can kind of pick and choose which direction you want to go it's not paved until you get to the trailhead by the dog park which is <laughs> yeah like you know where that is so it's like on silverdale way right where the 303 overpass is there's a dog park and there's a skate park and there's a parking lot where you park and then there's the trade uh, paved trailhead so that um goes all the way up to the trigger of gate exit doesn't go to the gate itself but the off-ramp from the freeway that you would take to trigger up that's where it goes so it goes you know all the way from old town waterfront all the way up to trigger up so i don't know geographically five or six miles as the crow flies but if you're walking it's going to take a lot longer because you're meandering and doing all the stuff and you've got to cross roads the traffic and all the things and so it's kind of cool it's 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 a nice trail um there's so many subsections of this trail that you can commit to like a short section of it like on your lunch break or whatever there's no need to walk the whole thing but um a lot of the office buildings they have back you know backyard access to the office buildings that open up to these trails and it's amazing so if you're working in silverdale it's kind of fun to just be able to get outside and walk one of these mini trails for 20 30 minutes on your lunch break and kind of get a nice little refresh some annual events that we have going on here so like I mentioned earlier, we try to take full advantage of um, the nice weather. So during the summer and early fall, there's usually something every weekend. The farmer's markets are starting to open. So we're right at the beginning of April right now. So um, later on this month is going to be the first opening week for farmer's markets. Uh, Bremerton's opens May 11th. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it goes to like the first week of October. So farmer's markets is a big deal. We have annual Armed Forces Day Parade, which is coming up. Up, like third weekend in May which happens to be the same day as my daughter's birthday so I won't be attending so I'll be at Great Wolf Lodge with her. There is the Blackberry Festival which is Labor Day weekend so last three day weekend of the summer in September and that's really cool that's held down at the Bremerton Boardwalk Waterfront Marina and like everything Blackberry so from foods to jams and desserts and that sort of thing to wines to blackberry themed like trinkets and all kinds of stuff. So it's a really fun time to be had by all, especially since it's one of the, gonna be the last, you know, nice weekends of the of the year. Whaling days, that is in um, Silverdale. That's one day. It's not a weekend, it's just one day. Um, but that's a lot of fun. That takes place at the Old Town Waterfront in Silverdale. There's a beer garden, there's live music, there's all kinds of stuff going on. There's the rubber ducky race. So for the for like the month prior to whaling days, you'll see like a giant like 20 foot inflated rubber duck in Silverdale, kind of at a random location. And that's where you go to like buy these little bath like a, you would think like a little bath rubber ducky right and got your name on it or your, your number on it look kind of like a raffle ticket so it's numbered for your name and then the day of whaling days they just have all of these rubber duckies that people have purchased over the last several weeks just kind of floating in dyes inlet and they let them all go they like open up the rope and they let them all go and they just float and whichever duck crosses the line <laughs> like that's the winner so they, they call it a race but how are these like rubber duckies gonna race so it's basically just luck of the draw anyway they have big stuff like you win a truck like it's a big deal so um people like to get involved with that and everything so that's a lot of fun music in minette so music in minette is and it's on this little grassy knoll right at the base of the minette bridge on the minette side um right above the boat shed so there's a nice there's a cool restaurant down there called the boat shed but it's just the local whoever playing whatever and people just come and sit on the grass and enjoy it and it takes place in the early evening uh, through the late evening and the sun goes down and it's fun to be had for all so if you have like questions about something i didn't talk about like oh does is there something like this to do in Bremerton or that or whatever? Do Is there this kind of meetup or whatever? Shoot me a, a message or email me or drop a comment or whatever and I will definitely get back to you because I know that obviously I can't speak for everything. I mean, I didn't even touch on stuff that goes on in Port Orchard, like there's a car show or Polsbo, there's the Viking Fest and all these things going on all summer long. So if you want to know more about other locations or other events or activities, um, yeah, leave me a comment and I'll be sure to respond and I'll get you the info that you need. Um, if you like this video or podcast, if you're listening on the podcast, <laughs> go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to the channel, tap the little bell so you're notified every time I drop a new video and I will see you guys on the next podcast. Bye for now.